Once the patient has been screened and is safe to have an MRI scan, ask them to lie supine feet first on the scanner table. Place the peripheral coil over the lower limbs of the patient and plug in. Give the patient an emergency alarm, ensuring they know when and how to use it. Strap the coil securely in place. Now place two body coils over the abdomen and chest. Ensure that all the equipment, including the cables, is well tucked in, as the table will move throughout the scan. Also ensure that the patient is positioned correctly. They should be lying in the middle of the table, so the median sagittal plane running through the patient should align with the middle of the bore and the scanner table. Give the patient ear protection in accordance with manufacturer's guidelines, again tucking in any loose cables. Slowly move the patient into the bore of the magnet, centering in the middle of the lower leg. Fully place the patient into the magnet. Make sure they're calm and comfortable before leaving the room. Once back in the control room, select the patient in the browser or type in the details manually. Ensure the correct patient weight is entered so that the SAR or specific absorption rate can be calculated accurately. Register the patient as lying feet first and supine. In this protocol, we'll be performing an MRA or magnetic resonance angiogram of the lower limbs. The protocol in our department is performed in three stages, covering from the abdominal aorta to the plantar arteries of the foot. Bring across the correct protocols and start with some localizer sequences. This first localizer is a scout of the lower leg with the centering position at zero millimeters. Below it, you'll notice the next localizer of the upper leg, which is 420 millimeters from the isocenter of the lower leg. A measurement of between 400 and 450 millimeters can be applied to the majority of patients and can be adjusted manually depending on the patient's height. The table will move 420 millimeters into the bore of the magnet to cover the thighs. Wait for the lower leg scout image and ensure overlap before applying the upper leg scout image. There should be overlap between all of the sequences to avoid any missed anatomy or misregistration. It's a good idea to inform the patient of the table movements before they occur. The scout of the lower leg has been correctly obtained when you can visualize the ankle joint inferiorly to the knee joint superiorly. This is a sagittal, coronal and axial localizer of the thigh. Using these localizers, plan the upper leg vessel localizer. Vessel localizers are phase contrast 2D sequences which are used to locate vascular structures. Ensure the spine coil and peripheral coils are turned on. On the sagittal localizer, angle to the femur, ensuring full coverage anteriorly and posteriorly. On the coronal localizer, centre to the median sagittal plane of the patient. The same applies in the axial plane localizer. Then apply. Next is the abdomen and thorax localizer. The table will auto move 840 millimeters from the isocenter of the lower leg. Again, check for overlap. Once acquired, bring up the abdomen and thorax localizers for viewing and for planning the next sequence, which is the vessel localizer. Turn on the coils. 
In the abdomen, we want to obtain an image of the abdominal aorta, which will run along here. Check the planning in the coronal plane, aligning it to the median sagittal plane parallel to the aorta. Coverage should be enough to cover the right and left iliac arteries as they bifurcate from the abdominal aorta. Check the centering in the axial plane, adjust and apply. After all the localizers and vessel localizers have been acquired, we can move on to planning the T1 3D sequences. In this protocol, we have flash T1 3D sequences, which are T1 volumetric spoilt gradient echo sequences. Flash on a Siemens scanner stands for fast low angle shot. We'll now acquire three sequences pre-contrast and the same three sequences post-contrast. These sequences should capture the aorta down to the iliacs, femorals and the tibial arteries. Now plan the T1 flash coronal aorta sequence on the abdominal vessel localizer. In this sequence you can trace the abdominal aorta down to the iliac arteries. Plan the T1 coronal scan angling along the aorta including the whole of the vessel anteriorly and posteriorly. Be sure to include the right and left external iliac arteries that run forward anteriorly. Check the planning in the axial and coronal localizers. It's preferable to acquire this sequence during a breath hold to minimize movement artifacts from breathing. When ready, ask the patient to breathe in and hold their breath and click continue. Watching the countdown on the bottom left hand of the screen, you can see that this is a 15 second breath hold. Once the countdown has finished, remember to instruct them to relax and breathe normally. Reviewing this sequence, we're looking for inclusion of the vessels. Here you can trace the aorta as dark signal running down to the bifurcation of the right and left common iliac arteries which in turn branch into the external and internal iliacs. We're also looking for evidence that the patient has held their breath adequately. Planning the T1 femoral scan, bring up the upper leg localizer along with the upper leg vessel localizer. Angle along the vessel and turn on the coils. This is the superficial femoral artery and behind it is the deep femoral artery. Check coverage and centering in the axial plane. The arteries can be seen here as bright dots. Check coverage and centering in the coronal plane. The FOV should be sufficient to cover the whole of the femur. Once acquired, check coverage and image quality. Here are the dark arteries running through the upper legs. Next, plan the lower leg T1 sequence. Bring up the lower leg localizers in all three planes. Superiorly, make sure coverage is from above the knee joint down to the ankle joint. Angle along the length of the tibia with coverage from the anterior border of the tibia through to the gastrocnemius muscle posteriorly. Check the centering in the coronal and axial planes. Adjust as necessary and apply. The parameters used in the three post-contrast sequences should be exact copies of those in the pre-contrast sequences. 
The protocol should also be set up with an automatic move of the table along with automatic acquisition. You can check that everything has been copied here. In this protocol we have care bolus tracking where we visualize the contrast in the heart and then manually trigger the scan. The care bolus slice therefore needs to be placed within the heart. Bring up the thorax vessel sequence and plan on this. This is the heart. Place the slice through the mid-heart, making sure the sequence is isocentered so the table will move automatically. Turn on the coils. Now we're ready for contrast administration. Enter the correct volume and the name of the contrast. When ready, press continue and proceed to administer the contrast through hand injection or injector pump. When the contrast is visualized in the heart, stop the scan, instruct the patient to breathe in and hold their breath, and press continue. Now ask the patient to breathe normally. Here you can see that the images have been successfully auto-subtracted by the software to show the aorta, bifurcating into the right and left common iliac arteries, each descending into the external and internal iliac arteries. The table will move automatically to image the upper leg. Here you can see the femoral arteries leading down into the popliteal arteries. These pronounced arteries are the left and right superficial femoral arteries. Notice the fat subtraction in these subtracted images. The subcutaneous fat and the fat in bone marrow is suppressed and appears dark. Any gadolinium enhanced vessels and vascular pathologies will appear bright on these sequences. After a final table movement, here you can see the right and left popliteal arteries superiorly leading into the tibial artery, the fibular artery, and their peripherals.